Welcome back to another RC video. My name is Ryan. Today's video we're going to be talking about how do we know a lithium polymer battery pack is dead. Now there's a few different reasons as to why we would want to know that a lithium polymer battery is on its way out or considered dead. The first reason why is because of safety itself. When a lithium polymer battery pack gets close to the end of its life, it will become unsafe to use, in which case it should be disposed of. If you don't take these precautions, it could end up deadly. Now the second reason why we would want to know that a lithium polymer battery pack it would be considered dead is because of performance itself. As the lithium polymer battery pack ages, it does not deliver the same amount of performance that it once did when it was bought brand new on day one. So let's get started and take a look at three easy ways that we're able to determine that a lithium polymer battery pack is dead. The first way is by physical size alone. Now the typical term you would hear in the radio controlled industry is ballooning. A battery pack when it gets taxed really hard it produces a lot of heat and then what we can get is a bunch of gases being emitted within the cell. Those gases have nowhere to go. They are trapped within the cell itself and then they begin expanding the cell out and this is where we get the whole ballooning effect. When you get the ballooning effect there's a bunch of pressure inside that cell making it very very unsafe for us to be using or handling. I have a perfect example in my hands right now. In fact, I don't even keep this in the house. I have to keep it outside and I've been keeping it outside just specifically for this video. Now, what we have in the bottom is we have a good cell. Cell number one is actually in great condition. You could see it's in that rectangular shape that you typically see within the cells that we use in RC and it's about maybe a half inch or so in height. When we look at the cell on the top, it is extremely expanded to the point I've never actually seen a cell get this large before. We have about an inch or so of expansion of this cell. It is very, very puffy. And it, right now, it used to be, when I ended up getting it to this state, it used to be very, very pressurized. Now I can actually press within the battery pack and it's, there's not as much pressure as there once was. This battery pack is on its way out. It needs to be disposed of right away. This is an unsafe condition. That's how you know that your battery pack is on its way out. Yours does not need to get to this size in order to be considered an unsafe battery pack. Now the second way that we're able to determine if our battery pack is actually dead is based on performance alone. What I like to do for this test is place it into my RC of choice, whatever I typically use that battery pack in, and I like to be a little bit more aggressive than I normally would be. What I'm looking for in this test is to maintain the actual temperatures of the battery pack, making sure that they are still operating within the safe range. Now I consider battery packs to to be operating within the safe range as long as I don't go over 140 Fahrenheit or 60 degrees Celsius. That's what I'm measuring up against. So what I do for this test is I fully charge my battery pack, I place it into the vehicle of choice, let's assume it's a radio controlled airplane, and then I go about my normal flight. Upon landing, right away, immediately, I go and take a temperature reading of that battery pack. If it is below my temperature threshold, then I know that it's in good operating condition for my application. It doesn't mean necessarily that the battery pack is healthy. It just means that it's not going to be operated in an unsafe condition within my application. Now, if I am operating that um, RC vehicle aggressively, and that is the most aggressive I would operate that battery pack, most likely it is still in good health. However, when I take it and place the battery pack in my float plane, I can use a battery pack that otherwise performs very poorly in a radio controlled EDF jet, an electric ducted fan jet, and when I place it into the float plane, it operates no problem. That's because of the different loading. So you really need to know the application and how that best works with your battery pack in order to understand if the battery pack is dead or not. If it didn't operate well in a low power consumption, that would definitely suggest it's no good. The third way that we're able to determine if our battery pack is dead is through its charge cycle itself. Now what we're looking for in the charge cycle is the internal resistance measurement that most chargers that are computerized today provide to us. What we're looking for in this internal resistance measurement is a data point from when your battery pack was brand new. Typically what I like to do is put down the numbers that I see per cell, so you'll get a reading per cell of your lithium polymer battery pack. If it's a six cell, obviously that's six readings you're gonna get of each individual cell. I like to take a data point for every, let's say, five times that I charge the battery pack. This way I'm able to know if that battery pack is uh, slowly degrading over time. 
Now what I'm looking for is a change within that internal resistance. If it gets upwards of double the internal resistance, I know that that battery pack is slowly on its way out. Now, depending on the application, it may still be okay with double or even triple of the internal resistance. Again, if I put in an electric ducted fan jet, I need that difference within the internal resistance to be extremely small. I don't wanna see it increase much or if anything at all. Once it does start to increase um, slowly, I can definitely notice a performance difference where the battery pack does not perform as good as when it was brand new. This is a sign that it's slowly on its way out. It doesn't mean that you can't drop it into another application, but seeing this number increase over time, this internal resistance is a good sign for us to show how we can actually know if that battery pack is on its way out or not. Now what I typically do is I take the three that we have learned about today and I use them all at the same time. I'm not just using one or two, I'm using all three of them to determine if my battery pack is on its way out or not. And I am also determining when to throw it out based on all three of those tests. Now if you enjoyed this video and you like what you're seeing, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and I'll be able to see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.